This tutorial will demonstrate using the MySQL Cluster Auto Installer to define and deploy a MySQL Cluster database across multiple hosts. Here you can see the steps that we're going to go through, in fact what the Auto Installer is going to go through. So the first is the top left, specify workload, so that's the only bit of work we need to do, tell it the kind of application we're going to use, otherwise it'll just assume a generic one. Then the auto installer will do the auto discovery, finding out what resources are available on each of the hosts. It will come up with a topology, so which processes to run on which hosts, and we can review that and modify it if we want. And then finally we hit deploy, and then the installer will push the configuration files out to each of the hosts and start the processes. These are the servers we're going to start with, and these are the processes we're going to run on each of those uh, servers. So on the top two servers, a pair of MySQL servers on each, as well as management nodes, and then on the bottom two hosts, we're going to have a data node on each. As we're running on Windows, we just double-click the setup.bat file and wait for the web page to load, and you'll automatically be sent to the uh, home page. Click on Create New MySQL Cluster, and this is where you'll start defining what the cluster should look like. The first thing to do is to specify the list of hosts that are going to be used for the cluster nodes or processes. So here we're going to have four different hosts and so we just specify the IP addresses here. Uh, it, for, on the first pass through I'm going to just create a very simple cluster and I'm not going to override any of the defaults unless I have to. So we just specify the username and the password that's needed to SSH into those hosts. We can now see that the auto installer is querying all those four hosts and getting information from them, such as the amount of memory, the platform, etc. The only thing I'm going to change first time through is the install directory. So basically, this is where I have unzipped the um, MySQL cluster uh, installation files and also what directory on each of those hosts I want to store my data in. Okay, now go to the next step. And the next couple of screens I'm going to skip straight through just because I want to show you first of all how you can create a simple cluster very quickly. So click on deploy and start cluster and you'll see here the progress as it does just that. Creating the directories on those hosts, copying the configuration files over and then finally starting the actual processes. I will point out that this is speeded up. Um, it takes a, a little bit longer than you're seeing here but not a lot of fun in watching that. So that's why we're going through a little bit quicker. So now the cluster is up and running, and if we wanted to, we could connect to that database and start using it. Now we'll stop the cluster. Again, in real life, this takes a little bit longer. And then we're going to go through the whole process again, but this time we're going to override a few more of the defaults. So, like I say, we'll start again. We're going to specify the same four hosts to use, but this time in the application area, I'm not going to stick with the uh, default simple testing. I'm going to go for a, uh, a, a more configured cluster, and we'll see what that means. So I'm going to choose web application, acknowledge that yes, it may take a bit longer to start, and for the right load, let's make this a, a write intensive application. Again, just specify the username and the password for those four hosts. We see here that it's doing the auto discovery again, so looking at each of those hosts, logging in, getting information about the environment there. And once again, I'm going to select all four hosts, edit them, and change the directory where I've unzipped the contents of the MySQL cluster package, and also where I want to store the files for the cluster itself. So basically the configuration files and the data files. So on the next stream, screen I can see the different nodes that have been configured so we've got management nodes, API nodes, MySQL servers but I'm going to add a new one so I'm going to add a, an API node so basically that's a, just a connection that applications can use to connect to the database so that's added it to the 106 server but I've changed my mind I want to put it in the 107 server so just drag and drop so very simple to create new processes and change the hosts that they're going to run on on the next screen, I can see and make changes to some of the configuration parameters. So by default, you don't see a great deal because we want to keep it nice and simple. But if you want to make more changes, then click on Show Advanced Configuration Options and you can now get into the details. 
So all of these are sensible defaults based on the, um, the actual hardware and the application. But for the data memory, because I was using virtual machines that have uh, only got a gigabyte of memory, uh, the auto-installer only allocated a very small amount of data memory. So I've increased those. And those are the only two changes I'm going to make. Then we move to the next screen. And on here, we can just use it to confirm what the configuration files are going to look like. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of... Um, values that have been set here so overriding the default values and based on the type of application I said I was and the hardware available it's come up with a good uh, set of um, configuration files okay so again I speeded that up uh, but the cluster is now up and running and just to prove it let's go and check that all the processes are running where they should be so yep, so all the processes are there and we're able to log into the MySQL server. I've gone through this extremely quickly just to give you a flavor of how to use the installer. If you want to see more details and in particular take it at a more leisurely pace, then just go to this blog entry, clusterdb.com slash u slash auto, and there you'll see all of the steps in more detail.